The Future Sport Podcast is brought to you by 3Advance, developers of sports tech apps that are AI-powered and UX-focused. So if you're looking to create some apps for your startup or your sports biz calls for some artificial or business intelligence, you should check out 3Advance. They're incredible. Go to 3Advance.com. That's the number 3Advance.com. Empire. Turning an early athletic cash influx into an investment vehicle. If you look at what we want to accomplish, I think it's in line with the goals of the Players Association. So one, uh, we're empowering PJ to start investing off the court at a young age. That's Joe DiPario, founder of Sport BLX, who has helped one NBA rookie become a tradable asset for fans and investors alike. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. P.J. Washington is the Charlotte Hornets rookie who has signed on with Joe DiPario and his group as they look to turn early career earnings into a form of VC money. And in turn, fans or just investors can buy into P.J.'s career and his investment savvy. The win for the player is more upfront cash with the promise of building a post-playing career at the outset of just being drafted. Here's a new one. You want to buy stock in the career of an NBA basketball player? You can do that with Charlotte Hornets rookie PJ Washington, who joins us alongside Joe DiPario, who is the founder of Sport BLX, where shares in the future of earnings and a career trajectory are now offered. Hey, Joe. Hey, PJ. How are you? Very good. good. How are you? So, um, Joe, let me let me start with you. Um, why do this? Why? How did you guys come up with the idea of of using players and their careers and their trajectories as an investment model for fans and other investors? So, Sport BLX or Sport Blocks was founded uh, by myself and my partners in early nineteen, and we actually come from uh, an investing background. We all were affiliated with a hedge fund called Fintech. And I had a, a keen um, a passion for, for investing in new markets and felt like we were at that point in human history where people uh, would interact with their phones and trade securities on, 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 a, on a digital platform. And what we wanted to do was really bring alternative investment to, to bear. And what better place to start with than sports? You know, sports is characterized by by having decades of, of growth within within their industries. Team values go up, salaries go up on an annual basis. And what we look at as investing in sports, no different than any other asset class, whether it was real estate or high yield bonds or even mortgage backed securities. So our, our goals are, 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 are broad. You know, we want to have 10 to 15% of every trading account in America or every retirement account in America invested in sports assets. And the best way to do that, in our minds, is to go through our platform, open up a brokerage account, and be able to invest in in, in securities that are backed by by athlete contributions, um, uh, or, or even team interest down the road. Um, so I want to get into some of the the meat of how the investment came to be, how you determine what the value is worth. But but PJ, just largely. Why did you want to do this? Why did you want to allow people to invest in your future earnings? Um, I thought it was a great way for me to build wealth off the court as well. Um, I thought it was a great way for me to interact with my fans also. So, I mean, those are two things I prioritize, prioritize and I think um, with Sport Block, they prioritize the same thing as me. So, um, just being able to do those two things just brought, uh, um, it made my eyes big, and I was really excited about doing this. Um, has the NBA uh, for either one of you, PJ first, has the NBA expressed any reservations with you about how you're going about this in terms of salary cap? We talked to the NBA about this and, um, pretty much, I think we're on the same page with both parties. So, um, I think everything is a go still. 
Joe, was, yeah, I, was there I, any I, concern there, Joe, with the NBA? Well, we had a lot of discussion with the Players Association and in turn the league with what we were doing. I think if you look at what we want to accomplish, I think it's in line with the goals of the Players Association. So one, uh, we're empowering PJ to start investing off the court at a young age, yeah. diversifying his wealth, and also providing him a, a financial transaction that sets him up from the standpoint of, of risk management. I think what you'll see in our first deal with PJ, and this is probably a good point to delineate the notion of, of investing in PJ's career versus investing alongside of PJ, the, the contributions that PJ will make to the corporation are actually fixed. So they are not tied to his performance or, or the upside or downside of his career. So investors are getting a pretty juicy high yield return for investing in this corporation and it's a relatively safe investment as, as far as we've defined it. Oh, okay. All right. So, so right. take me through the investment model then. Then, then what is someone buying a share of? Sure. So at, at its core, we set it's called the PJ Washington Corporation. Uh, there's a capital raising event in that corporation that raises money. In turn, PJ is contractually obligated to make contributions to that corporation for the next nine years. That money that is infused into the corporation is really wealth management capital for PJ to manage to his benefit. And investors, in turn, uh, get the ability to, to receive contributions over time, which are fixed. So what we've underwritten to is a 5% preferred return. So at the base level, investors will get a 5% return. On top of that, they may also get additional equity returns from the operations of the corporation. So the corporation is free to do other things to create revenues. It can in turn help PJ with his wealth management and generate revenues there. It can recruit other athletes for the sport blocks platform. It can present marketing deals to PJ and create revenues that way. And shareholders that, that purchase the stock are entitled to those equity returns on top of the 5% that's contractually obligated to them. And so his playing career and career earnings from the Hornets or whoever he ends up playing for, that doesn't factor into this? It doesn't for this transaction. So we were very purposeful to design a, a relatively safe investment that will generate the 5% returns. In the future, basketball, baseball, and their sports, we will come out with more variable offerings that have equity-like returns, but equity-like downside. I think our belief is that to seed the market with the first deal, we wanted to come out with something relatively safe that PJ would also be attracted to. Okay. So, uh, so PJ, if you're telling an investor, invest in me because I'm going to do this, what are you going to do? I think I'm a, I'm going to be a, a smart investor. Um, person that just I mean, wants uh, the best in my investment. So, I mean, from, for, for right now. So, I mean, I think I'm a, a good person to invest with. So yeah, I, I think we, we were very careful to pick PJ because he's a, he's, he's a responsible citizen, came from a good program. He played well his first year. Second, uh, he was the second team all rookie, shot the ball well, played good defense. Yeah. And, you know, the only thing that he's really on the hook for are, is his cooperation with our, with the corporation, which is, which is the contributions that we've set forth in the contract. So as long as he continues to be a good citizen and contribute those, uh, the, those earnings, you know, shareholders will make their return plus more. Support for this podcast comes from Dropbox Business. Think about the people you work with. You're all supremely different, but that's what makes a team so valuable. Different skills, different backgrounds, different ways of thinking and working. So why force everyone to work the same? Dropbox designed a new kind of workspace. A space where whatever works best for you works best for your team. Where every file and app connect. Tasks not only assign work, but also help organize it. Where you can create new decks, spreadsheets, and even launch video calls without ever needing to leave your workspace. That's Dropbox Business. A space for teamwork your way. Try Dropbox for your team at dropbox.com slash teams at work. So, I mean, it's an interesting mix, Joe. I mean, because... It reads almost initially like you're investing in the trajectory of, of a career, but it's not the career that, that you think you're investing in, at least initially. And I don't, I don't mean that to come off with the wrong tone. 
Um, you're asking to buy into an investment model, but it's not in his expertise. You know what I mean? Well, to be clear, the investor returns aren't deterministic on PJ's wealth management. Right. They're only determined by the contributions that he's contractually obligated to make. So the way to think about this is really, it's not an equity, it's a bond. It's a high yield bond yeah. backed by the cash flows and contributions of PJ. And we think there's a place in the marketplace for that. We will also have, like I said, much more variable interest, vol highly volatile stocks, but that's that's not what this is. This is a relatively safe investment for shareholders that want to be part of a corporation that PJ is involved with and have a very safe return to it. So um, take me through your thinking, PJ, a little bit with, with all of this. I mean, we've talked to a lot of athletes who are diversified way differently than, you know, previous generations of athletes are. Um, as you looked at this as something that you wanted to be part of, as you get your career started, why was this attractive to you? Like I said, I mean, this was something that can help me create wealth at a very young age. And I'm uh, really interested in living the same life, lifestyle that I'm living now um, when I'm done playing. So for me to have my, for them to give me my own business and um, help me make investments now is just uh, the smartest thing for me to do at my age to um, better my career off the floor as well. What are your interests? And, and I, Go ahead. Not inter interject, but I think he's being extremely modest. You know, I, I think PJ has always had a mind for business, and, and he's always saved his money. You know, I think he's probably one of the first rookies uh, to buy a home in his first year in, in, in the Charlotte area. You know, I think he has bigger goals, which he, he might want to sure. But you know, I think his goals are to invest, whether it's real estate. You know, I think he wants to own a car dealership someday. You know, I think that there, there's ways to make his money work for him off the court. Um, and what are you looking at, PJ? Tech space, real estate, traditional businesses? Like, what what what, what interests you? I'm very uh, interested in real estate. Um, I think that's uh, something I really want to get into. Um, me and my dad have talked about that plenty of times, so that's something that I really uh, I really enjoy. Joe, have you looked at this model with not just athletes but entertainers in in general? Maybe young entertainers that are that are entering into whatever space that they're in. It's a great question. It's something that we want to get into in the future. I think our goals are to be very pervasive in North America sports first, basketball and baseball, and then in 2021, move to become an international company with soccer, where the, the numbers are, are just extraordinary. And then double back with, with the smaller sports like hockey, golf, and tennis in North America, and also be selective about um, some players within the, in, in the NFL. You know, I think our view is that uh, the NFL lends itself well to short careers and injuries, so we just want to tread lightly. Yeah. I think eventually what we would like to do is license our technology and partner with others to be more expansive in other asset classes. So you talked about young artists. You know, I think we could partner with with uh, with a, a recording studio or even an online streaming service and, and, and start to sell either individual rights to songs, intellectual property, or even invest in young musicians. You know, same thing with with um, uh, with movie finance, whether it's young actors or actually financing individual movies. So I think it, it's relatable. It's a relatable asset class. You know, I think the nice thing about sports is that it's well followed and the visibility is good. So we'll know, um, you know, to the dollar what a baseball player will make, in, in, you know, for, for his team. Uh, and eventually when we, when we move on to more variable offerings beyond the bond offering that we have for PJ, you know, I think it'll be really interesting from the standpoint of creative trading and volatility. I mean, this could expand to influencers for that matter, or young people who are on, you know, high level, um, you know, college trajectories. I mean, there's, there's, there's all sorts of applications for this in terms of investment in young people. We agree at, at its core, you know, I, I hate to paint this with a wide brush, but the athletes are represent a stream of cash flows going forward. No different than an asset like a building that produces cash flows. So I think we use our financial expertise to turn them into securities. And then, you know, our marketing engine you know, tells people that they should own these and why they should own them for the portfolios. PJ, when you've talked to some of the other players, if you have talked about this with them, what have they asked you about and, and what is their interest level in, in joining you in an, in an endeavor like this? They pretty much just asked me, um, what is it about and what is it like? What is it actually? And I uh, pretty much told them that it's just a 
online pla- uh, financial platform that allows people to invest in sports with you. So, um, and pretty much, I mean, everybody I talked to was excited about it. So I feel like in the future, we'll have a lot of athletes like me um, alongside of me as well. Uh, it's it's really interesting and complicated, but but interesting. Um, all right, I'll leave you with this since the yeah, NBA Finals are starting. LeBron going to win again? I hope not. I want my uh, teammate Tyler to win. What do you think, Joe? Who would you be investing in? LeBron? I got my money on LeBron. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if, if Tyler Hero was a share offering on our platform and LeBron was a share offering on our platform, I, I think I'd take Tyler <laughs> because I think the perception is that uh, he's a lot more upside in his career. Uh, shot the ball very well this postseason. He looks good. Um, but if I'm a if I'm handicapping the finals, it's hard to hard to bet against LeBron. Yeah, he seems to be the ultimate value pick in the end. Uh, PJ Washington of the Charlotte Hornets and Joe DiPario from Sport BLX. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Support for this podcast comes from AT and T. Five G from AT and T is fast, reliable, secure, and nationwide. So should you switch? Well, historically, those were the reasons new tech was adopted. Neanderthals saw that fire heated things fast and made their caves secure from rampaging woolly mammoths. The ancient Romans saw that the aqueducts were a reliable and fast way to transport water, so they stopped carrying water jugs on their backs and adopted them nationwide. Oh, and uh, 1800s Victorians saw electricity light up rooms fast and be more reliable than candles blowing out. So they stopped bumping into walls and made it nationwide. Today is no different. Switching to AT&T 5G is kind of a no-brainer. I mean, historically speaking, it's smarter than candles, water pots, and hungry dinosaurs. AT&T 5G. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan may not be in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. On the next Future Sport Podcast... Yahoo has been building for a better betting environment for years. For other fans, it's about playing fantasy. For other fans, it's about just checking in on scores. And yeah, for a subset of those fans, it's about, um, you know, accelerating that experience into something as as deeply committed as, as sports betting and making it as easy and as seamless for those fans to do so. That's Jeff Reese, GM of Yahoo Sports, where sports betting and content creation has merged into the new sports fan experience. That will do it for this episode. As always, the future is now. This is the Future Sport Podcast. I'm Bram Weinstein. The Future Sport Podcast is brought to you by 3 Advanced, developers of sports tech apps that are AI-powered and UX-focused. So if you're looking to create some apps for your startup or your sports biz calls for some artificial or business intelligence, you should check out 3 Advanced. They're incredible. Go to 3advance.com. That's the number 3advance.com.